I'm going to stop you right there. I'll, I'll do the questioning. Okay. You're no longer testifying right. in the narrative. Okay? okay. I just want to be hey, accurate. Me so too. That's, that's good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. This is the way it's going to go. Right okay. now, you're going to get questions. Well, it, 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 stop. Stop. Just I'm sorry. Wait for the question. Okay. Please come to order. Are you ready? Yes, if we could just make a brief record. You bet. Um, I want to confirm that uh, defense counsel had nothing further that they wanted to ask the defendant before we get going. Mr. Bateman? No. Um, no? Okay. Um, I just wanted to say, you know, one of those. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, and then from there, uh, defendant is discussed a lot. Uh, still going with the uh, defense of entrapment clearly, um, and so he is now opened up to specific characters. Um, there's a couple things that he brought up that I think uh, the doors open up to uh, without a hearing on those subjects. Uh, that would include. Specifically, uh, Shannon Nordstrom and his efforts to contact her and, and do the same thing with her. Uh, as he also mentioned several times in letters to other judges. Uh, I think one in particular that comes to mind, especially given the fact that he's talking about other events in this case, um, come up with uh, Kalia Williams, who was sitting as a pro tem judge in this case, uh, in Justice Court. He dropped off a similar letter to her at her office uh, in November of 2019. So, as, in addition to that, um, I think that he's also opened the door to the stay away order that was ordered in the Justice Court since he wanted to talk about the parameters of uh, what occurred within the TPO hearing and uh, it ultimately only going on for 30 days. I believe that he also, through his actions or through his testimony, uh, opened the door on the fact that uh, he has been deemed a vexatious litigant by the 8th Judicial District Court, as well as that he's previously uh, filed appeals out of the Justice Court and has also been uh, banned from other courtrooms. You want to go into case that he's been deemed a vexatious litigant? What does that have to do with this? I think it has to do with when he's discussing his intent and his intent when he deals with the courts, specifically the vexatious litigant order, which we have a certified copy of, indicates that uh, Mr. Blandino's filings are repetitive and appear to be filed merely for the purpose of harassment. Uh, so we have courts finding previously that the defendant is filing things and doing things in the court for the purpose of harassment. Um, it goes outside the, the scope of what he's, or outside of his proper intent, which is just to help the Commission on Judicial Discipline. And then, um, he, he knew at the time that he was banned, he knew at the time he was kicked out of uh, Mr. Federico's courtroom on that day, he already been banned from other courtrooms. So this wasn't something that was new that he didn't, didn't know could happen. And that happened specifically in Judge Bear's court. Where he was also found in contempt. Court denied the real petition. 
said it wasn't properly found in contempt on the petition for the hearing. That's the basis on which you got a letter of caution. Letter of caution. I don't know where you stand on any of that, Your Honor. Well, and where defense counsel stands. I don't know. I don't know what the facts are relevant to Shannon Nordstrom or to Leah Williams or what you would go into. I mean, he obviously testified on direct that he's sent these letters many times to different judges. So, I mean, I, I don't know what the facts would be. So, yeah. can you make an offer of proof? Yeah, so the offer of proof that we have for uh, to Leah Williams would be that On uh, November 25, 2019, uh, Mr. Blandino called and left a message for Ms. Williams at her office. Uh, and then, uh, in addition to that, that same day, prior to following the message, he dropped off a few sets of paperwork to the receptionist there at her private law office after she had sat as a judge uh, in the Justice Court case related to this. And so he was there. The letter is urgent service of process to Talia Williams on November 25, 2019. He says that uh, to Talia Williams and her known capacities, pro tem judge, licensed attorney, master in case A 19 797388 B and female human from Kim Blandino. Perens in quotes, Kim in quotes, and Perens in all Kim Blandino's capacities. Uh, that being, in parentheses, believer and the creator of all things, and his only born son, counsel for Kim Blandino in all legal matters, as attorney for Kim Blandino, investigative journalist, and investigator of judicial misconduct and corruption, to which capacity Kim has volunteered for and receives no pay or remuneration for, and who tries to settle matters with offending judges to avoid having to file complaints with the Bad Commission on Judicial Discipline, parens, quotes, NCJD, end quotes, and parens, Whereas this capacity, anyone has the power to do under Nevada Constitution, the NCJD has objected to my verbiage, describing the same, and the state has in fact charged Kim for impersonating a public officer, which charge is totally false. Kim welcomes any suggestions as to shorten verbiage that describe what Kim is doing and adequately and specifically describes the same, period, and parens, a male human being. Re, refusal to mail, refusal of mail which contains important legal information and that Talia must recuse from case 19-797388B. The important legal mail that was refused on or about September 4th, 2019 by Talia Williams. Okay, can you like, uh, just give me a summary instead of reading? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I mean. It's so essentially what he tells her is that he needs her to recuse off a case that he believes that she is uh, hearing this uh, Apache Mills tailing case um, that ultimately is uh, coupled with uh, him saying Williams must now contact Kim to resolve these wrongs without Kim have, having to go to the Commission on Judicial okay. Discipline. So same, same, same thing. Type of thing. Yeah. And she's a pro-tem as well? She is. She was at least at that time. Okay. And um, so her private law office? At her private law office. She didn't have any chambers here. And she substituted the other two. Okay. And um, Shannon Nordstrom? Yeah, Shannon Nordstrom would testify. <coughs> she's been contacted. Well. What do you mean she would testify? So she would testify in, in rebuttal in this case. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. That uh, Mr. Blandino um, has had a history of sitting in her courtroom, one day, apparently uh, sending writings of some sort to the court or to her, but that on April 25th, 2019, uh, she, Mr. Blendino called her and left a voice note, which we have a copy of, and has been provided to the defense counsel, uh, indicating that uh, she needed to, to resolve the issues with him. He, he was reaching out to her because he just had uh, something going on with Mr. Federico, and so he gave Mr. Federico a last opportunity to resolve things, so he wanted to give her one too and make her aware of it, and then he sends her the April 25th letter that he provided to Mr. Federico. And what does she have to do with it? 
Uh, well, I don't she... understand what she has to resolve with me. <gasps> yeah, I guess whatever he had in his mind, but she did wrong. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Violations of the code. So the defendant is specified on the record violations of the code. Okay. All right. So you want to go into those two things, and then the, the stay away order? Yeah, I believe the stay away order has become relevant based upon Mr. Blandino insisting on testifying to the events in the temporary protection order case, uh, that the uh, temporary protection order was extended for 30 days, and then if at the completion of 30 days they stay away from each other, then it was the extent. Uh, I think that it's become relevant that there's been an ongoing state of that's uh, has a tendency of this particular case, Mr. Plendino cannot contact or go near Mr. Federico. I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Can I have that repeated? There's a stay away order pursuant to his bail conditions. I know Mr. Blandino's aware of it. All right, and then the vexatious litigant order is relevant because? That uh, the court has found that his prior filings were intended for, for harassment mm -hmm. and um, not out of some innate intent and desire to further the public good, as he testified in this overall thing. Are those all the issues you want to go into on cross? I just want to make sure before I ask we, uh, Mr. Bateman to respond. We had the one as well. Um, and, it, and it does, it is related in this way. So both the, the issue of the vexatious litigant order, which related to the case that he filed the complaint on Judge Herndon, where he was ultimately deemed a vexatious litigant, and then the uh, appeal into from another a city case into the district court in uh, about 2014, where he was ultimately banned from the courtroom because he was uh, representing other people. Um, that was with Judge Baer, and he testified to that, the filing complaints on Judge Baer and Judge Herndon. That's, that's it. That's the totality of what I'd like to hear. Mr. Dino, you've got to let him respond to the court. Um, Judge, I would say that uh, she has not opened up the door on, on, uh, on these. Clearly, you know, I mean, you agree when you put forth entrapment, his character is clearly an issue. I do. I understand that. Okay. I, I, the one thing I think that the vexatious litigant, I think, is is different. I think anything regarding that would mischaracterize his testimony that he files complaints with the commission to make things a better. Uh, I don't. Know. That my notes from what I said, but we would have said to make the world a better place. So those along those lines, um, not necessarily civil filings, and I think that would confuse the, the issues. And I think anything related to um, a filing that's not in regards to complaining with the you know, sending a complaint to the commission. We've heard from Mr. Dyla; he has the right. Anyone has the right to file, and um, so I think as far as the vexatious litigant, it's it re it's it's prejudicial value. I think outweighs its probative value, and then I think it would it, it confuse jurors because that vexatious litigant isn't related. That designation as a vexatious litigant is not related to his filing with the commission, which is specifically an issue here as it pertains to Mr. Federico. Now, so I understand this character is an issue, and um, I know I was given these letters. Um, I didn't bring 
you know, 50 bankers boxes. But I think as these letters relate to anything, um, to anything other than uh, a complaint with the commission, I think it risks confusion, confusing the jurors um, as to what uh, they stated in the was what she said in regards to complaints with the commission just to make things to make things better. Well, would anything so. related to Shannon Nordstrom or to Maya Williams, those, those were complaints relevant to him appearing in front of them, correct? Correct. Okay. So, I mean, you know, I, I, yes, and he uh, certainly helped uh, Mr. Dickerson make his point by not keeping his mouth shut. So, but I do think the, uh, there's a difference to be drawn on the vexatious level point, and it would be uh, confusing to the jurors and unfair to Mr. Adam uh, Anything else, Mr. Dickerson? No, Your Honor, we'll submit on that. Okay. Um, I, I will allow you to go into these issues with the exception of the vexatious litigant issue, although it may be probative. I think any probative value would just be outweighed by unfair prejudice. So, you, you go into it, the yeah. issues regarding, I mean, I'm assuming oh, Shannon Nordstrom and Talia Williams, are, they're both pro tems? That's correct. Okay. Well, yeah, it, it would be a pro tem position for uh, Shannon Nordstrom. She's uh, an appointed magistrate. She was, okay, so she, she was oh, in so traffic. I think her official title was, I know he doesn't so appear in the hearing court, but I think it's hearing commissioner, or traffic okay. commissioner, I believe, was her. Title at the time, I believe she's been appointed now in Department Six in the Municipal Court. Okay. Anything else before we bring them in? And so, as far as the, um, was your ruling the same on the prior City of Las Vegas appeal that was filed, and then ultimately uh, him being found? In contempt and being banned from the courtroom. In, in the city of Las Vegas from Union Court? So once he appealed up to district court. Okay. On the traffic matter in front of Mr. Federico? No, this was okay. a separate matter coming out of the city. Okay. I have a, a certified or con, order of contempt and refusal here. So it, it happened in the Eighth Judicial District Court. Okay. Uh, the case that he appealed was out of the city of Las Vegas. Oh, okay. And then um, it came here. And yes. so during his appeal hearing? During his appeal hearing, yes, he was found in contempt. And Judge Fair refused. Okay. So I'll get the report now. Oh, this, uh, I'm sorry. So this, I, should, this should be I didn't catch all of that. This should um, be a copy of that for the court to review. Okay. Let me just double check. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, first try. said it was not properly found in contempt. They just let the uh, 25 feet thing stand, that's all. But they said it was not properly found. They did not agree. That doesn't mean that it negates what they found, that they wasn't properly found in contempt. Right here, Ben. Or do you, sir? Yeah. 
case. So Judge Bear said you can't come in this courtroom. The district court and then he refused on Mr. Landino's appeal. And you want to go into this because? I want to go into this uh, essentially to show that, you know, he's previously filed appeals in the city of Las Vegas cases before. Um, and that he, he knew the process. He knew, he knew the recourse. And there, I mean, it was dismissed as well. But in addition to that, he'd also been banned from the courtroom before. He'd also been kicked out of the courtroom before and held in contempt before. Uh, so he, these were not on charge of waters. Mr. Bateman. Oh, it's 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 Mr. Well, Mr. Been, you know, we have it already on the record here that he appealed um, this case that it was denied. I don't know within that if they're offering that this to indicate he knows the proper procedure to appeal. That's already been yeah. I, established. I'm not going to allow I, them to go into this issue. Okay. Thank you. Fred, thank you. Is there anything else? No, that's it. Thank you very much. Can we bring them in? As part of reciprocal discovery, Mr. Blanky is providing a copy of the Commission on Judicial Discipline complaint that he filed against Mr. Federico. He filed that in August of 2019. Um, I obtained this from the defendant and his counsel. Uh, and what I will be getting into here, just so the court's aware, is that throughout this complaint that he filed after this case existed, Mr. Blandino repeatedly and specifically asked the Commission for Judicial Discipline for immunity over and over and over again. He oh, asked, for, for immunity in this case? In this case. Well, they obviously can't do that. They have, they have legal authority to do that. Under to, the law. To grant immunity yeah, to in grant. this specific case. Yeah. Okay. It, 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 that's my read of it, actually. Okay. Um, so I'll get into the date and I'll get into him asking for immunity. What is being implied here? For, okay. For... okay, we can bring him in. You can bring him in. All right, Kurt. All right, we're entering directly. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Does the state stipulate to the presence of the jury panel? Thank you, Your Honor. And the defense? Yes, we do. Thank you, Mr. Chief. 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 You're not the investigator for the Commission on Judicial Discipline. I'm an unofficial investigator, yes. So are you telling this jury that you are an investigator for the Commission on Judicial Discipline? Unofficially, yes. No, you're not, sir, right? You sat no, here. That's not true. You, you heard the testimony of Paul Dyla the same I did, right? That you are not and you never have been an investigator for the Commission on Judicial Discipline, correct? He wasn't. A, he wasn't correct? Specific. It's a yes or no question, sir. What? Repeat the question. The, question is, you are not and you never have been an investigator for the Commission on Judicial Discipline. I disagree. I'm an unofficial one. You are absolutely not. And that's the bottom line. You're going to agree with me on that? No, I don't agree with you. I disagree 100%. Okay. You're also not an attorney, right? I'm an attorney, and in fact, for myself, when I appear for myself, and I'm an attorney, in fact, for Evelyn Pendergraft, both by uh, regular uh, attorney and uh, power of attorney, and for her durable health care power of attorney. I'm an attorney in fact, which is different than an attorney at law, but in terms of I can represent her, I can sign for her. That's I good. Sign men at, but, so you so can't so admit to this jury that you're not an attorney, right? You can't admit to them that you're not an attorney? I'm an attorney in fact for myself when I represent myself. Okay, but you're not an attorney, correct? 
I'm not a licensed lawyer. Okay. And you're not an investigator for the Commission on Judicial Discipline. Can Unofficially, you... I am. Yes, okay. sorry, yes, great. So you can't admit to this jury that you're, you're not... I'm not going to admit to something that's not true. I'm sworn to tell... Not sworn. I promised I would tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And you're trying to bury me with half-truths. Okay, so in fact, um, the Commission on Judicial Discipline has in fact sent you a letter, a cease and desist letter, that said, stop calling yourself an investigator for the Commission on Judicial Discipline. Which I cured? Is that a yes, is yes or no, sir? Did they send that letter? Is yes. that what you're asking? Yes. Yes, they sent that. Okay. And I received it from jail. You've never received any training from the Commission on Judicial Discipline, correct? Not official training, unofficial training. You have never uh, been to any sort of work function for the Commission on Judicial Discipline. Define work function. Where they train their employees. In, in what venue are you talking? It's a no, right? Well, I just want to know. I want clarification. It seems like an ambiguous question you're answering. Okay. Asking. All right. So you admit to doing everything in this case, right? Admit to doing everything? What does that mean? Well, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. the objection sustained. I guess then we'll just go through each one, right? So you admit to, on April 8, 2019, going to uh, Mr. Federico's private law office at 9950. I'm sorry, no, I don't agree. Uh, please public, let me finish my question. It's a public sir. law office. Please let me finish. Open to the public. Please let me finish my question before yeah. you answer, okay? Okay. So you admit to going to Mr. Federico's private law office on April 8, 2019. I didn't go into his particular office. I went into the reception area. I never made it past the reception area. Okay, so that's a yes. No, it's not. Here, it's a bad question. I went to the reception area of those offices, and even as he testified, he never came out for that little hideaway thing he had, whatever he called it. Okay. Uh, you were there for a while, correct? The writing that note, yes. And in fact, you did write the note. Sure. That's not denied. Okay. Like I said, in my sloppy I'm just confirming that, that note. I'm confirming that you're admitting to everything. No, I'm not admitting to everything. I mean, now see, you're, you're restructuring what you asked. Okay, I'm showing you here. You said you're going to go one by Stage one. Stage Exhibit 3. Okay. Right? Is that the note you wrote? No. Is that a it's, copy? It's a copy of the note that I wrote, to be specific. Okay. But I think it was green paper is the original. Is, is that green on the screen that you're showing? It's not, sir. I think it was green. Okay. Yeah. So is this, a is this a note. copy of the note that you wrote on April 8, 2019? Right. It is? Yeah. It's, it looks like a true and correct copy. Okay. Yeah. And uh, at the top... You identify yourself, Kim Landino Wright. Right. You identify your email address, Kim.net, yes. correct? Uh huh. Again, you got to let me finish my question before you answer, sir, okay? Oh, I thought you were through. Sorry. Okay. I apologize. And you identify your phone number, 702 219 5357? No, that's a 6. 5657, five, that's yeah, right. Yeah, it's my sloppy handwriting. Uh, you wrote that. Yeah. And you wrote the rest of this note, correct? Yeah, I don't see any alterations at all. Okay. Uh, you addressed it to Michael Federico, pro tem judge, alternate judge, city yeah. of Las Vegas. Yeah, see, he's got a title alternate It's a yes judge. or no, sir? Yeah, yeah, that's what I wrote. Okay. Uh, in addition to that, you began, off, began this note off. I am ready to begin filing my complaint against you. Right? Right, right, right. Uh, right down here, you indicate I'm going to give you an opportunity to negotiate settlement. Is that right? You wrote that? Yeah. Please let me know within the next 10 days. Correct? Yeah. <laughs> and then you tell them about your past two complaints to the Commission on Judicial Discipline, right? Right. And you signed that, is that your signature right there? Yes. And your phone number? Well, it's a copy of my signature. 
be specific. What is there on the paper is your signature, right? Yeah, there's a okay. copy of the signature, yeah. It's a copy of the paper that had your signature on. Yeah, I mean, what I'm looking at is a copy of my signature, right? Yeah, so it's your signature. Yeah. Yeah. And then your phone number. Right. 702. Yeah. There's also that, that sticky note, right, on the second page of that? Is that a copy of that? Yeah, I asked her for a sticky note, and I put that on there. And you said you got the jabs? Yeah. Should have known I spelled out what that was. Jefferson Audio Visual System. Okay. And so you admit to that? Yes. Okay. And then you admit to, on April 25th, 2019, going to Mr. Federico's courtroom. No. You just testified about it. It's not Mr. Federico's courtroom. He's only temporarily there. Okay. So I looked through the window and I saw that he was on I'm going to stop you right there. I'll, I'll do the questioning. Okay. You're no longer testifying right. in an error. Okay. okay. I just want to be hey, accurate. Me so too. That's, that's good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. This is the way it's going to go. Right okay. now, you're going to get questions. Well, it, and, and, Mr. Hey, stop. stop. I'm sorry. Just wait for the question. Okay. And so. Michael Federico was sitting as a pro tem judge on April 25th, 2019, right? Well, actually, alternate judge, I found out later. Alternate judge. Okay. Is the title there. Okay. So you agree with me, yes? Agree with you what? Yes, Michael Federico was sitting as an alternate or pro tem judge that day, correct? In, in courtroom 1C on 20? Yeah, yes. April 25th. Well, actually, it's. April 25th, 2019. Yes. Yeah, I think it was that morning. I don't think he did the afternoon session. Okay. And uh, you go to that courtroom where he was sitting as a judge, right? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. You can see before you enter the courtroom that he's in fact sitting there as a judge, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw him before I got up to the front. Okay. You go into the courtroom and you sit down, right? Is that a yes? Yes, I'm sorry. No, I'm okay. Sorry. Um, and you said that you've been like doing all kinds of stuff throughout the courthouse that day, right? Right, it was uh, several, several locations, more than several. And so when you come to the courthouse uh, that day, you're just going all over the place? I had, uh, I believe I had business to do on one or two locations, a cashier specifically. I mean, if you want me to refresh my recollection, I can look at that document again. But, uh, and then I would, when I go to the courthouse on things like that, I kind of let kind of God lead me as to where to go, what courtroom, and I just, the marshal's kind of perplexed. Where are you going next, Mr. Bland? Do you know what he asked? It was John Gurkha on that day, real nice guy. Anyway, so I said, where are you going next? And I said, well, and then I would move here or there, depending on how the spirit moved me. Okay. And so this day, it led you to Mr. Federico's courtroom, right? Right. And uh, I was surprised. Did you come through the, the security check gate when you came in? You mean where the scanners are in there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And when you go through there, do you have to, to take your belt off like everybody else? Uh, when I'm wearing a belt, yeah. Okay. You have to take your shoes off like everybody else? Yeah, then you have to take shoes off, but now you don't. So okay. they have modified that subsequently. Okay. And in fact, um, you, you wear shoes that you tie generally, right? Generally? I'm trying to think about that. Are you, you mean as opposed to like Velcro or something yeah. like that? Yeah, mostly they uh, they tie, but sometimes I can slip off my tied shoes and then slip them on like they're slip-ons. Okay. Yeah. But usually tie. Yeah. Okay. I think that's fair. And so, when you walk into Mr. Federico's courtroom that day, you have this gray tray in your hand. What is that? <laughs> I thought I explained that. What what happen times I ha I do, because it takes a, quite a bit of time to put the wallet belt and all that stuff. I found that I'm usually waiting in line 
somewhere along the way or in waiting or on the elevator, I can dress while I'm there. It's kind of a time management thing. So, you know, and I kind of make a joke to different people when I see, you know, it's kind of time management. Then as soon as I can find my way back, you know, in my travels, I'll drop the, the container off. Sometimes I don't drop it off until I go up the exit and I go like under the rope and I put it on the table so it saves somebody the effort. Of so it. it's fair to say that that gray bin came from security checkpoint. Yeah, sometimes I bring my own. Oh, you bring your own security checkpoint bin to the courthouse? Yeah, right bin. Yeah, I've done that a couple times. Okay, uh, but not this day. No, no, not to my recollection. No. Okay, the one that you had there that day yeah. was in fact yours. I'm going to publish to the jury. Uh, page exhibit 31. This appears to be April 25th, 2019. Right. Okay. Uh, pausing it right there, one second in. Uh, your shoes are still on time from the security checkpoint, isn't that right? Are they? I don't know if I didn't tie them or they got. Sometimes those laces come loose. Oh, okay. We'll just play it. It looks like just the one shoe laces are loose, right? Oh, yeah. Both of them? No, I'm saying it looks like just the one shoe the laces are loose. Okay, well, the jury can watch that and judge that for themselves. Okay. And then um, you admit to being kicked out of that courtroom, correct? Well, I think that's the evidence that you say it shows that that's what happens. I didn't ask what the video showed. I asked, you admit to that, right? You admit to being kicked out of that courtroom, right? Are you asking me to determine whether this is an altered video or not? No. I'm asking not. you, you admit to being kicked out of the courtroom, sir, correct? Well, not literally kicked. The, no one took a shoe and kicked me out, but they said, he said, get out uh, in 10 seconds or you'll be found in contempt. And he said it's because you came to his private law office, right? That's what he said on the video, right? Because that's, you came to my private No, no, office. that's what he said in real life when you were there, right? He you, told you, get out of my courtroom because you came to my private law office, right? No, I didn't. It's a yes or no question, sir. No, he didn't say it that way. Okay. What he said was, because you came to my private office, you can't be here today, I think. That's pretty close. Okay. A little better. I mean, it's... And so then you tell him... Nice. Uh, you're out of order. Well, I think I said first, I think that's not true. And then I said later, that's out of, yeah, I think you're out of order. Okay. Yeah. But in fact, it is true. You did go to his private law office on April 8, 2018. No, I, well, you already admitted to it, right? No, I, what I'm saying is I don't think that's true that you can kick me out. That's what I was trying to get across. Okay. Because it is for sure true that you went to his private law office on April 8, 2019. You no, know, I have that transcript if you'd like me to show it. It's a yes or no, sir. What's, what was the question? Again? You did go to his private law office on April 8, 2019. No, I went to a public office and I went to the reception area. I don't know why you want to be okay. mischaracterizing that. I'm being very clear on that issue. Okay. And then, his office so you would say, hey, there's no question, Penny. Yeah. And so you admit to all of that. The events of April 25th, 2019 at the courthouse, right? Yeah, that, and he said, and he said, don't stalk okay. people. It's a yes. Yeah. And he's, he said, don't stalk people. Right. And that was what you heard that day. Right. Okay. And so, you then admit to this jury, you go home, right? No. At some point in time that day, you go home. No, but right from there, I go to make a customer feedback form. I testify to that. Okay. Are you testing my memory? After your customer feedback form, yeah, uh, you go home. Right. And then you get on your computer. Well, yeah, I start typing on it. And you start typing the letter of April 25th, 2019. Right, right. And then in the afternoon, you go back to Mr. Federico's private law office at 9950 West Shine. Yeah, I don't want to wait for the mail. I want to get it right there. It's a, it's a yes. Yes. Uh, you go up there with this letter that you typed and attach the customer feedback form. Right. Uh, and in, in addition to that, 
You've also included uh, two letters from the Commission on Judicial Discipline right. uh, that you say are from previous complaints you filed. Yeah, against Judges Bayer and Hyman. Okay. Because you want to make sure that Mr. Federico knows that you're serious, right? No, I don't think that's what I demonstrated. I wanted to show him that I wasn't filing frivolous complaints. Okay. So, so I think it's different So when saying serious. It wasn't enough complaints. when you wrote in your note, my past two resulted, my past two complaints in the Commission on Judicial Discipline resulted in letters of, ca of caution. You wanted to make sure that he saw the letters that you got back from the Commission on Judicial Discipline, right? Well, anybody can make an allegation. You say yes or no? So, I can now repeat you want to make sure Mr. Federico saw the letters that you got from the Commission on Judicial Discipline, right? Well, I think that's why I included them, sure. Okay. And so you go up there and you drop off the letter of April 25th, 2019, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what I have on the screen here. A copy of that states Exhibit 4. Is that the letter? Yeah, that's a copy of it. Okay. Let me go ahead and just zoom in a bit here so you can see it a little bit better. There at the top, you put the date, right? Right. April 25th, 2019, is that correct? Right. Uh, and then you address it to Michael Federico in his capacity as a judge pro tempore, correct? Right. And that, that was another screw up that should have put alternate judge. Okay. Because if it's Judge Pro Tempore, that would be when he sits on the Justice Court. Okay. So, or Justice Pro Tempore, but he's alternate judge, is his title in the state. Just in his capacity as a judge, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. And then from there, you say that it's from you. Okay. Is that right? Right. And then you, you title it. You title this letter, Desire Not to Have to File Formal Complaint with Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline. Right. And you abbreviate the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline, NCJD. Yeah, I always do it in that form because uh, it's easier than writing commission. Right. So throughout your letters that you've provided that are in evidence in this case, every time you said NCJD, it's the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline, right? Mm -hmm. Can he add? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Thank sorry, you. Judge. And then. Here, on the second paragraph here, you indicate that you are an on-pay volunteer investigator for the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline. Yeah, to investigate judicial misconduct and corruption, yes. But you're, in fact, not an investigator for the Commission on Judicial Discipline. No, I'm an official investigator. That's not true. I, I, why do you keep repeating that? I mean, that's been asked and answered, I think. I'm unofficial. Okay, well, I'll determine that. Oh, I'm sorry. So you need to answer yeah. the question. No, I, I, that's not, that, I, it is true that I do that, but I do it unofficially. Which now is what I say, you know, more clearly, in brackets, I put, which means unofficial. So it, it, it's absolutely clear then that I'm not an official, I'm not trying to pretend to be an official officer, agent, or employee of them. That, that, that's what I thought. Unpaid and volunteer would mean to an average person. I mean, an average understanding. I mean, I mean, I'm an unpaid volunteer firefighter too. I fought some fires and put them out. I'm an unpaid volunteer. Um, Are you an unpaid volunteer uh, detective for yes. uh, the Los Angeles Metropolitan Police Department? No. Okay. No, I work with them though on occasion. Okay. I provide them information. I did yeah, just listen. the other day. Made a three one one call. You made sure to tell them that you were there in that capacity as a unpaid volunteer investigator for the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline, correct? Right to investigate judicial misconduct and corruption. Sure. Yeah. And in fact, You're also an investigative reporter, which I've got proof of. And in fact, you could have just said uh, that you're an unpaid volunteer investigator to investigate judicial misconduct and corruption, right? Well, it wouldn't I, be the you same. Say I right? could have, it, your question is, I could have said that. Yeah. Well, I could have said a lot of things, or written but you a lot didn't. Of yeah. Right. You said that you're an investigator for the Commission on Judicial Discipline, right? Well, 
It's a yes or no, off. sir? Yeah, I did. I did look okay. it up there. Uh, then you admit to coming to his uh, law office to see if you could, you could meet him man to man and see if you could resolve the complaint without having to use the scarce judicial resources and Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline resources, right? I think I said publicly listed offices there, it looks like to me. Is that a yes then? To see if I can meet you man to man. Yeah, publicly listed offices, yes. Uh, indicating that you wanted to do it without having to use the uh, Commission on Judicial Discipline resources, correct? Right, which indicates that I'm not really an official of them. Oh yeah? Yeah. So, you go on here. So to avoid having the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline subject this complaint to their protocols, I once again reach out to you to resolve this matter between you and I or your attorney if you wish any intermediary. Is that right? Yep. Yes. Which their protocols, not our protocols. If it was, I was an official. It would have been our protocols. So clearly, that they're they're separate from me in terms of official, because I'm unofficial. You go on. I believe you should seriously consider resigning, right? Yes, because uh -huh. I believe he has a temperament. We should meet and see if these matters can be settled for all concerned and for a multitude of reasons as cited in part above. Right. Right. Yeah, because, so because you can't you can't do something in a letter where you can meet face to face and do thing. That was is what was important is a meeting. So you can have a meeting in the minds, you know. You know, paper, I'm I'm old school. Okay. Right? You know, There's no question stuff. pending, sir. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. And so You remember when you testified during your initial direct testimony and you said, they just told me never to come back. That would have been it, right? I would have just filed my complaint and been gone. Right. And you admit that on April 25th, 2019 in the morning, Mr. Federico sitting at the pro tem judge kicked you out of his courtroom because you came to his private law office he told you not to stop people, correct? No, I don't okay. agree. That's a compound question. I can't answer that with a yes or no. Okay, so you don't agree is your answer. No, it's a compound question. I can't answer it as asked. Cool, you already answered it. And then, uh, public law so you admit, you admit to the events of April 25th, 2019. Is that right? Admit to... What was the... I mean, this seems to be asked and answered several times. It does. Okay. Me too, as well. Mr. I agree. Blandino. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, we'll go back to that then. We'll go back to States Exhibit 4. Uh, here, is this the customer feedback form that you attached to your April 25th letter? It's a copy of it, looks like. Uh, here on the customer feedback form, you said your business in court, investigative journalists and investigating judicial misconduct, right? Right. You didn't write that I am a uh, volunteer investigator. Hey, you see, there's not a lot of space. Hey, hey, no question yet, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. You did not write that I am a volunteer investigator from the Vast Commission on Judicial Discipline with this document that you gave to the court, did you? No, I didn't. Okay. And uh, you go on to discuss uh, the events in a series of pages of April 25th, 2019 that occurred in the courtroom. Is that right? Let me uh, maybe scroll up and flip through a thing. I think it was uh, eight pages or something like that. It was how many pages was it? You said several. Two, three. I didn't number these, did I? Four. I'm not seeing. Oh, there it is. There's a numeral, numeral five. Was it eight? Several to me always seems like it's five. I don't know why. Six, seven, eight, yeah, eight pages. Is there another one? And then the exhibits. Yeah, it's right in my memory. It's pretty good. Not bad, okay. old guy. And then we go to the back pages. Right, the exhibits. 
Can we look to the, the last exhibits, these two letters that you attached mm -hmm. from the Commission on Judicial Discipline, right? Yes. Uh, the ones that you previously referenced in your note of April 8, 2019, right? Right, right, that's true. Uh, that's the ones I was referencing. Okay, you just wanted Mr. Federico to see this, right? Is it yes or no? I'm sorry, repeat that question. You just wanted Mr. Federico to see this, right? Yeah, it, uh, I wanted him to see it. I, had, I put the notation up there, earned in complaint, and then bare complaint on the other. So we'll get to that. Yeah. So you write earned in complaint on this, right. and then on the next one you write bare complaint. <laughs> right, right. Because uh, the Commission on Judicial Discipline didn't tell you uh, that here, this first one was a uh, complaint that you filed on Judge Herndon, right? Yeah, they just uh, go by the uh, case numbers there. So I have to look at the original letter I put the complaint on. They said, here's your number. And then when they refer to it there, they have the RE case number. Then you know which one that refers to. But I don't know if they did that for that confidential reality so that if somebody got a copy of that letter, they can't tell. I'm guessing that's why. In fact, it is yeah. confidential, yeah. right? As, as, as far as they're concerned. They, both of these are yeah. confidential, right? As far as they're concerned. I can, I can publish it wherever I want. Okay. Um, nothing in this letter says that they issued a letter of caution to Judge Herndon. You have to know how to read the language there. Oh, it's a specific code that you got you to dissect? Yeah. Okay. You agree with my me? Training, my training mm -hmm. allows me to know that. But you've got no training from the Commission on Judicial Discipline. Well, that's my unofficial training, see. Oh, like your... Like Jedi stuff. Okay, got it. Uh, you agree with me, though. Nowhere on this letter does it say, we issued a letter of caution. No, not in those words, but if you look at this language... You're interrupting I'm sorry. the district attorney. I'm sorry. Nothing on this letter says that there was a letter of caution issued to Judge Herman, correct? No, it's inferred. But nothing in here says that, right? Not specifically. Okay. You have to read the code. Okay. Uh, same here with the one you titled Bear Complaint. Nothing right. in here. Says, you notice it's the same verbiage. Yeah. So nothing in here says that they issued a letter of caution to Judge Bear, right? Not specifically. You have to okay. confirm. Um, and in fact, the Commission on Judicial Discipline has never told you that they've issued letters of caution on either of those. No, not specifically. Just that they were but the dismissed. reports the reports show that it does. Just that both of them were dismissed, right? Yeah. Okay. And and, and well, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, there's not a question pending. I almost step on your toes. Okay. And so then we get to April 29, 2019. Uh, you get a call. From Mr. Federico on the same phone number that you've listed on all these documents, right? Right, right. You say, you testify that you just woken up from taking a nap with your feet up on your desk, right? Mm -hmm. Your daily. Well, afternoon. I didn't tell him that. I, I said I was shocked. And, uh, but that's what you told the jury, right? Yeah, yeah. I was still a little groggy, but I don't think I said that to him directly. I got okay. up from him. I'm not sure. It could okay. have. Okay. No worries. But you told this jury that, right? Oh, yeah, because that's true. And that's your usual nap that you do every day, is that what you're saying? Mostly. I mean, unless I'm doing physical work, if it's just office work, yeah, I need that nap. But physical work, I'll blow right past it. Okay. And... Um, you told this jury that you got the call, and I wrote it down. I was happy and surprised. I thought I said shocked and surprised. Is it happy or? Yeah, happy and surprised. It's happy and surprised. Okay. That that's what you were. Yeah, I I, I actually had the uh, the idea that. He, uh, that's yeah. that's the question. Sir. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. And um, you say that. The, what you remember him saying is what you wrote down on that piece of paper that was found during the search warrant. What is it going to take to get you out of my hair? Right. You were happy and surprised, you indicated to this jury, because 
you've done this before, and no one's ever contacted you. Let, let me recollect that. I'm, I'm That's what you I'm, testified to, right? Yeah, no, I'm just saying that, the, yeah, the, my recollection, no one has ever responded. Oh, you know what? That's what you testified to. No, I'm just thinking, rest, though. Right? Yeah, the, the other responses, I had some city marshals come to my house, but it was not to those letters. Oh. And Marwitz had been to my house before. Or, I mean, the house on 441 North 16. Yeah. Okay. I mean, So the last saying? response, or one, the only other response that you got to this type of a letter was having city marshals come to your house. It wasn't a letter of that type, though. I just wanted to be clear in my recollection. Okay. I'd written a letter to Judge Roger of some sort, but it wasn't about this, not to my recollection. So I'm kind of like 99% sure maybe that wasn't about this, but was something else. Okay. So you have an extended conversation with Mr. Federico. Right. You don't really remember what was said. Oh, no, I remember certain things. We testified on direct. It's been two and a half years. I don't really remember. I don't remember detail for detail, but certain specific things about him asking, wanting to do something about the contempt. I remember that specifically. Yeah. I told him that that was, would be illegal, possibly obstruction of justice. He needs to see his attorney. So you didn't want that, right? Huh? You didn't want that. Well, I didn't want him to do it either because it's illegal. It's, okay. And uh, when, I mean, if he when said, asked what you would want, you said, well, at the very least, I want an apology in public form. Yeah, but I really wanted to sit down and meet with him. That was the main thing that I wanted to do. You really wanted to meet with him in person. Now, not because I had any attraction, as he made it sound. But you then, yeah. you then said, let me think about what I want, and I'll get back to you, right? Well, he was pressing Is me. That, it's a yes or no. What do you think about what I want? I'll get back to you. Yeah, after he pressed me. It was he had to press me, and right okay. toward the end of the call. Okay. You know. I don't want to waste my time if he's... It's okay. There's no question okay. pending, sir. Yeah. Sorry. And so you agreed to send him an email with what you want, right? He, he, he told me what his email address was and, and after pressing me. Because you needed time to think about it, right? That's what you said. Right? Yeah, I'm basing that on the fact that he didn't reject out of hand a possibility of apologizing. Uh, to me for what he had done throwing me out of the courtroom. But you certainly sure didn't opening... say, all I want is an apology. What? You certainly didn't say, all I want is an apology. That's not what you said. No, I was more... I you was... said, I'll get back to you, right? Yeah, but I was more... Is that, it's a yes or no. Okay, what? You that... said, let me think about it, and I'll get back to you. Yeah, yeah, I have okay. impressing. And yes. so, you get his email address. He gives me his email address. He wants to give it to me. Okay. As later I found out, so they, they right. get it. Hey. Yeah. Okay. And can you think about it? Is that yes? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Perfect. And so you think about it, and you think about it, and then you take uh, two days drafting up your demand of what you want, right? No, it wasn't a demand. You take two days drafting up what you want, right? It's not a demand, though. I I, I disagree with that characterization. We can just go straight to it then. I mean, if he if he just said go jump in the lake, hey, hey, there's anything. no question pending, sir. Okay. Okay. So, states exhibit five. Okay. This is an email. May second, two thousand nineteen, at eight twenty p.m. Right. Right. Okay, and this was from you to Michael Federico. Right. And you did the subject draft of settlement agreement, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, and then you have the body of your email and you attached the proposed settlement agreement, as you called it, right? Right. Proposed. Yeah. Uh, this is the document that contained what you wanted from Mr. Federico, right? I don't think I could say yes to that. Okay, well, you but drafted you it. Hey, 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 hey. I'm you sorry. drafted it, right? Yeah, I did draft it. Okay, and uh, in here, when we look at this document, 
you identify yourself, Kim Blandino, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, yes. One of the things you identify yourself as is a volunteer on-paid investigator for the Commission on Judicial Discipline. Right. And investigative journalist. Okay. Uh, you identify yourself as complainant, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so every yes. time in this document that it says complainant, it's referring to you, Mr. Blandino. Mm -hmm. That's a yes? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's the language that was on the original I started out with. Okay. Complainant. You identify Michael Federico as responded. Right. You identify Michael Federico as alternate judge for Department 20 Courtroom 1C, Las Vegas Municipal Court at the Regional Justice Center, RJC, on April 25th, 2019, for the morning session. Right. In other words, that's when the event happened, the morning session. And so I don't know if he was in the afternoon session or not. You discuss a few things right here at the top. Mm -hmm. You discuss, namely under 1.1, that you're offering to settle various issues without having to involve the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline, right? You need me to zoom in there? Yeah, sure didn't word that as specific as you should have. I should have said involved hey, hey. That's what you said, right? Yeah. Well, I know that's what I wrote. That's what you wrote. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then you talk about in 1.2, previously going to Mr. Federico's private law office weeks no, ago. No, private is not in there. Okay. You go discuss going. Why, how to, did you read private out of that? I'm curious. You discuss going to Mr. Federico's office. Is that right? Yes. Uh, weeks ago. Right. In hopes of catching Federico at said office, correct? Yes. To speak face to face and man to man. Right. About resolving issues from 2018 of complaint by Kim against Federico. Right. True. I mean, yes. Okay. So on April 8, 2019, you went to Mr. Federico's law office. To address your issues that you had with him from the trial in August of 2018. Wait a minute, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to repeat that one. I got something in my eye that distracted me. Take your time. What's repeat the question again? Right. So on April 8, 2018, you went to Mr. Federico's office specifically to discuss the issues that you had with him from the August. Uh, 2018 traffic trial. Kind of about watched. the first appearance at his yeah. public office. Yeah, true. Yes. Do you remember when you were testifying on direct? And you talked about this event, and you talked about the uh, April 25th letter that you dropped off at the office, right? The April 25th? 25th. You remember that, right? You just, it just happened about two hours ago. And during that I mean, time... I just, just want to get my dates clear. So the first time I was there was April, April 25th. Or April 8th. I was there the first time, the April 8th, right? So, April 25th, you were there for the second time after court, right? Yeah, oh yes, 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 yes. I don't know why. My, my and so, do you remember testifying on direct? In my mind, I had done my duty to resolve the first incident. So, now it was about the second incident. Do you remember testifying to that? I don't think I said it in those words. Okay. It was something similar to that, but not quite those words. Okay. So here you are in your recitals going on, talking about your attempt to resolve the August incident in this document that you've entitled Settlement Agreement and Release, right? And you go on. Uh, Kim wrote an impromptu note to Mr. Federico to hopefully resolve the issues without having to file with the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline. 
correct? Yes. And then you attached a, a copy of that note. Mm -hmm. And then you went on. And we look to the second, the, what is marked as page two under agreement. And then we look to 2.1, the section that you labeled as 2.1. You see all that? Right. Yes. Uh, you tell Mr. Federico that you need him to pay you $25, correct? Yeah, later on they say for reimbursement, but not there. Okay, yes. so you tell Mr. Federico he needs to pay you $25, right? For the repayment of the cost of the jabs, yeah. Okay, yes. You tell Mr. Federico that he needs to apologize in writing prior to May 30th, 2019. And apologize to you, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And uh, that's specifically for ordering you out of the courtroom on April 25th within 10 seconds under threat of being in contempt and put in jail and acknowledge that you have a right to absorb court proceedings in the future. Right? Yeah, unless proceedings are specifically sealed or closed to the public. Yes. Okay. So you tell him, Mr. Federico, that you need a written apology and for him to acknowledge in that apology that you have a right to view all court proceedings. Right. Correct? Right. Okay. Which is what he led me to believe on the phone he was willing to uh, do. Okay. And uh, then you also tell Mr. Federico that he needs to complete at his own expense this ethics, fairness, and security in your courtroom and community class in person in Reno, October 21st, 24, 2019. Yes, or in the alternative, pay $500 Clark County Law Library and give a copy of the receipt to complainant prior to October 31, 2019. Okay. We go to the third page, as it's marked, and we look to uh, 3.1 that says release. In there, it indicates that uh, you hereby release and forever discharge Mr. Federico from all claims or complaints related to any and all occurrences on April 25th, 2019 between you and Mr. Federico, including any complaints to the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline, right? Yes. I guess you're indicating I should have said that date and only that date. Probably would have been more specific that way, I guess. And at the bottom here, 3.3, you say you agree that you have not and shall not bring any other action, claim, suit, or proceeding against anyone, including Mr. Federico, in any capacity, either individually or in his official capacity, for any acto activities on or after April 25, 2019, including any complaints to the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline. Is that right? Yes, that's the language. And you tell them that you'll withdraw that customer feedback form that you had submitted to the city? I don't know what that would do. They could throw those in the trash, but all I know, I very rarely get a response to those. And then you told the ladies and gentlemen of this jury that, uh, well, you did a cut, copy and paste job, as you put it, right? Oh, yes, uh -huh. from a, a, in a pre existing form. I could never find the original back again. Fair to say there was no cut, copy, and paste form for uh, how or what you should ask for from. Judge Pro Tem Federico, right? All that language was not in there. I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. There was no form that said Michael Federico as respondent, correct? Oh, you're saying could I find something on the web that has his name already on it? Right. No, no, yeah, well, yeah. Or that admitted to all the events of April 2019. No, that, that's why this is a template. This is done from a template. But you added all that, right? Well, like I said, Sorry, it's cut, cut, me and paste. Judge, you need to clarify that question. You added all that. It's a, I mean, it's pretty clear what we're talking about. We're talking about Mr. Federico. Well, I, 
Go He's interposing an objection. Why don't you repeat the question? Maybe he had missed something. You added all the stuff about Michael Federico in here. Oh, no, 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 no. It wouldn't be added. It would be cut, copy, and paste. Okay, so, so you, you wrote it, right? I wrote what? You wrote all the things that we've just read. Well, I had an existing format, and I cut in, I cut out certain names, and then put in other names. And in fact, copied, you, you admitted to this names. jury that it took you two days to write this, right? Right. Okay. And that you told Mr. Federico on April 29, 2019, that you had to think about what you wanted, right? No, I, I, I objected to the question as asked. It's not about what I want. It's what about fair and just and in cons concert with what I saw in other commission on judicial okay, discipline so settlements. You, so it's not you about thought about it. You thought about Wait a minute. You don't get to object yeah. to Mr. Dickerson's oh, I'm sorry. question. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay? You thought when about it. When he asks a question, you need to answer it. Yeah. Yes. And so after the call, you thought about it. I had to. He okay. was asking me to do something. I thought it was you, had, you had to take time to think about what I, I thought he was what you wanted. Faith. No, no, not about what I wanted. See, that's what you keep uh, uh, mischaracterizing. Okay. It's not about what I want. You know, uh, my life is not about what I want. It's what God wants me to do, you see. And, and with this kind of thing, it depends on what's fair and just and proper and right. That's why... It's not about what I want. The scriptures okay. say, so, my Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And okay. I take that literally. Okay. So then you told this jury that you actually went and you just searched for what you call the survivability clause. Right. That, that, because yeah, that, yes. That's a yes, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Because you started thinking like, well, what if Mr. Federico dies? Right? Yeah. I mean, yes. This $25 has to go somewhere. Right? Yes, if it was in the middle it's of yes. Yes. Uh -huh. And this five hundred dollars to the Clark County Library has to go somewhere, right? No, it goes to the law library and if he does Well it goes to you, right? It goes to you and then you'll And then say, I distribute it to the Clark County Law Library in total. And uh, probably with uh, some additional monies from me. And in addition to that, you discuss here specifically his death, but you don't discuss your death. Yeah. On reflection, I guess that wouldn't have been a bad idea. Okay. Should I die, the 25 bucks would go to Evie directly. Because if I die... Okay, I no question pending, pending, sir. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. The settling parties, that means you and Mr. Federico, right? True. Acknowledge yes. that this agreement represents a good faith settlement of issues of April 25, 2019. That this agreement is intended to bar any complaint against Mr. Federico by you with the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline or any court or agency or reviewing entity whatsoever with respect to the issues of April 25, 2019, right? Yes. And so, then you included your name and his name, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And you testified uh, to the jury on direct that you just forgot to add in a portion where that was going to be sent to the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline, right? I screwed up. I didn't put that in there. So... You forgot to add the part where you're going to send this whole thing to the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline when you're agreeing not to send anything to the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline. No, no, I didn't say that I wasn't going to send anything to the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline. Okay. I said I wasn't going to file a formal complaint. That's what I've been consistent on. All right. You know, if we can resolve things, I don't have to do the formal complaint. That doesn't mean that they can't publish a decision. You're just really not sure how it works. Not sure how what works. Oh. I'm sorry, how trying what works? to get things from a sitting judge or a pro temp judge that you want works? 
I don't understand that question. So your position is that Mr. Federico pays you $25. To reimburse the EVA. Right. Pays you $25. He gives you an apology in writing where he acknowledges that you can watch all these court proceedings as well as goes and attends a class in Reno or pays $500 to the Clark County Law Library. Uh, in exchange for that, you're not going to file any complaints with the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline. Right? In exchange for? I don't know if I could, uh, let's see. Think about Wait it. Wait a minute, what, what did you, repeat that question again? Repeat the question. You heard again. the question, sir. No, I'm sorry. I do need to repeat it. I'm sorry. I want to make sure I am totally accurate and totally truthful in this answer. So repeat that question again, because I think you're trying to trick me into admitting to something that's not true. I'm sorry, Judge, but if he doesn't want to repeat the question, I, I, re I really listen. You ready? You're going to be here, States Exhibit 5. Yeah. All right. In consideration, you use that term, right? Okay. Okay. That's the one that was in the original I started with. Yeah. You will accept $25 for the jabs, right. correct? And he gets the jabs. Hey, hey, it's a yes or no, right? Yes. In consideration, you will accept $25. Yes. And okay. He gets hey, jabs. hey. And then, in addition to that, uh, Mr. Federico will apologize to you in writing prior to April 30th, 2019, and will acknowledge... No, no, May 30th. I'm sorry. Good. Thank you for correcting me. I, he I mean, he will apologize in writing prior to May 30th, 2019, mm -hmm. and that he will acknowledge there that you have the right to observe the court proceedings in the future. Correct? Right. And further in consideration, I mean, yes. uh, Mr. Federico will complete this class mm -hmm. in person in Reno, Mm -hmm. on those dates, uh, or pay $500 to the Clark County Law Library and give you a receipt right. prior to October 31st, 2019, correct? Right, yes. Okay. And as in consideration for the promises made herein, you will not file any complaints, including any complaints to the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline against Mr. Oh, you're Federico. slipping there. You see, any and all occurrences on April 25th, 2019. So the question, sir, was, Mr. Federico gives you $25, he gives you a written apology acknowledging that you can watch all the court proceedings you want in the future, and... Not true. I mean, don't mischaracterize. And he completes the class or pays $500 to the Clark County Law Library, and in exchange for that, you won't file any complaints with the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline. No, that's not true. I will not file any complaints about anything April 25th, 2019, because he had, he had thrown away his opportunity to resolve anything on the initial thing at the trial. Uh, and maybe that's what I should have been clear on, that I still intended to file a complaint because he had Slap me in the face a second time as I referred to the jury when I on my direct testimony. Okay. So that so there was no there. quid pro quo, Mr. Prosecutor. Well, let me stop you right there. So you admit that that is true, then that you just were going to limit what complaints you were going to file. You were just not going to file the complaints for April twenty fifth, two thousand. That's what the agreement says. Okay. So he gives you twenty five dollars. He gives you a written apology acknowledging that you can watch future court proceedings. He goes and takes the class in Reno, and he pays $500 to the Clark County Law Library in exchange for that. You won't file any complaints with the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline for any of the events of April 25, 2019. Fair? Only for that. Yes. Okay. All right. And so um, a couple days go by after that, uh, and you have not heard from Mr. Federico. Well, I guess it's... I guess I should clarify, just the next day, just so that we're there. Uh, here's State's Exhibit 6, just the next day, May 3rd, 2019, you do the follow-up email to Mr. Federico, is that right? Oh yeah, this is the follow-up where I said I forgot to, uh, I forgot to put the exhibits attached. Okay, 
That's how tough a car nut is working. That, uh, and that was at 3.27 p.m., right? And you had the attachment, right? Right, right. And then we flip the page, and this is the same settlement agreement and release as you titled it. Right, with the exhibits, now this time. Um, you haven't added any language about uh, you still sending this to the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline. No, I don't believe I did. I think I just uh, attached the thing, the exhibits, and put it in a PDF and sent Okay. It. Yes. Uh, and then you attach the exhibits, including the April 25th, 2019 letter that you dropped off at Mr. Federico's office. Right. Including your customer feedback form. Right. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly what I intended to send. The and first time the, the original attachments of the yeah. April 25th letter, right? Yeah. And then yes. the copy of the note that he left on April 8th. Right. Yes. So he has everything in one package so he can okay. see it. Okay. And so uh, it's the April 8th letter that you attached as a, an attachment to it. April 8th, 2019. So you're ready to begin filing your complaints against Mr. Federico, right? You said it right there, first line. I am ready to begin filing my complaint. Yes, well, yeah, to begin filing it, which that should yes, said, the yes or no. Yes, I should have said. Okay, so no, I'll stop you there. Right. Uh, and um, April eighth, two thousand nineteen. The events of April twenty fifth, two thousand nineteen, had not occurred yet, right? Say yes or no. It's an easy question. You're saying the April eighth, the April events of April twenty fifth hadn't occurred yet. Yeah, I don't have a the worrying of flux capacitors. So I'd have to answer yes. So the complaints that you were ready to file were about the August two thousand eighteen events, correct? Uh, you know, I'm objecting the characters of complaints. I believe it says complaint in that. Can I see that? Oh, your objection is to the plural form. Yes, he's saying complaints, and I believe that letter just says complaint. Okay. Yeah, let's accept that. So the complaint that you were going to file was for the August 2018 events at the traffic truck. You mean the one I'm referencing in the, in the uh, April 8th letter? Yeah. Yeah, 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 because the other event hadn't happened yet. And right? you attach that letter as an exhibit to the demand? No, no, that's not a demand. It's a settlement uh, uh, agreement that he's asked for, or I thought he was asking for, but okay. it turns out he wasn't. Okay. Oops. So a couple days go by, and uh, you have not heard from Mr. Federico. Right? You're talking about after this May 3rd follow up? What was it five days? Are you saying? I said a couple. I thought I'd sent the next thing on the May eighth. Well, you started working on your next letter, right? <clears throat> I don't recall. You started working on your next letter as a follow up to the demand. Well, again, that was there was no demand. It was a proposed settlement. And while you were working on that letter, you got an email on May 9th, 2019 from Mr. Federico. Oh, the global agreement uh, request. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's that's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you got that while you were working on the, the letter. Right. Yeah. And it took a while to write, too. Like two days or so, you said? No, no, no. When I, when I was... And that one, I recall, I was saying, you know, I had begun writing. When I got his email, I said, I'd already begun writing this letter. That's why I think I didn't update the, the date of that letter. So the date I actually sent it out, it was actually the date from before, which I do sometimes in my legal work. Yeah, you've been working on it for a couple of days. You forget to change the date on the bottom, and you got to cross it out, or whatever. Sometimes you forget you send it in the wrong date. Yeah, so the letter that you... Attached to your response to Mr. Federico on, eight, on May 9, 2019, you've been working on it for about two years. Uh, I don't know how long I've been working on that one. Sometimes. You said it took a while, right? Yeah. Okay. And you know, I found in and out of it sometimes. You, gotta, you get phone calls, you get this, you get that. Okay. So here we have 
States Exhibit 7. Here's the May 9, 2019, 9.20 a.m. email from Mr. Federico to you. Is that it? Okay, yes. This is where he's like, hey, please provide a global agreement that would cover anything in the past that you believe negative against me so that I can see it. Right? True. Yeah. Your current yes. proposed agreement does not resolve everything you seem to be complaining about, right? Yes. And you'd agree to that as well, that it didn't seem to include everything. I'm sorry. Yes, it, it appears as though. Uh, okay, so then we'll go from here. He's wanting. So seven. now it's May 9, 2019, at 9:20 a.m. Right. One yes. hour and 28 minutes later, you respond to Mr. Federico. Is that right? Oh yes. Uh -huh. You write, Michael. Here is a letter I was just about to send you before I read your email. I think it covers some of your concerns. Right. Yes. I must be leaving very shortly. Yet, so I am not spinning my wheels, I do need to know if a written apology and a judicial college law course, law library donation, is a, quote, bridge too far, unquote, for you as it stands. Yeah, that's a British term from uh, World War II. I net, is that, that's what it says? I'm sorry, yes. Okay. I now have the jazz and I'm ordering a transcript. What I'm asking for is consistent with remedial action the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline has effectuated over decades. True, yes. I am willing to be flexible and reasonable, yet if the things I propose are a non-starter for you, I do not want to move forward down a dead end. Right? Exactly, so if he says no, jump on the lake, I file my complaint. Case closed. Right, if he doesn't give you what you want, you file your complaint with the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline. No, not what I want. Again, I uh, object to that characterization. That's not You true. were the one okay, who... Okay, again, you don't get to object. Okay, well, then I'm going to have to answer no, then. No. So, just to be clear. I'm sorry, I apologize. I got a little bit heated there. Uh, oh, let me reiterate. No. I'm no sorry. what? It's not what I want. What do you mean, no, it's not what you want? It's not about what I wanted. You're the one who wrote that demand. I didn't write the demand, no. You wrote what you titled settlement agreement or release. That was an agreement of demand. You wrote that, right? That's not a demand, no. You wrote that, right? I wrote the set proposed settlement agreement, yes. Okay. Um, and if he didn't want to agree to it, then you'll just file your complaint. Yes. So then uh, you attach the letter, May 8, 2019. Is that right? That's what the date is at the top of the letter? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Though you emailed this on May 9, 2019. Right. I, I, was, I told them I had started working on it, and that's kind of the evidence that I did because I had a date and I forgot to change it. Yeah, because you, you were going to send him this letter before he ever emailed you on May 9, 2019, right? I had intended to uh, uh, mail it on May 8th, but if uh, I couldn't mail it, and I didn't get that intervening email, it probably would have changed the date, maybe mid mail it on May 9th. That oftentimes happens with me. I start something, I have to change No the date. worries. You already had it completed, though. You are good to go, right? Uh, so no, I don't know if it's completed. It was mostly completed, probably. I maybe I to put a few things on it. Okay. Uh, and then you title it to Michael Federico in his capacity as a judge pro tempore, yeah. right? Yes, yes. From Kim Blandino. Right, yes. Uh, regarding follow-up to proposed settlement offer sent May 2nd and 3rd, or May yes. 2 and 3, I should say. Proposed settlement offer, not demand, yes. And then here at the top of this, I have not received any word back from you regarding the proposed settlement offer. That's what you wrote? Yes. I spent a great deal of value, very valuable time preparing that document. That's what you wrote? Yes. I will need an answer or for you to otherwise respond to this proposed settlement on or before May, 23, May 23, 2019. 
That's what you wrote? Yes. You acknowledge then uh, you appreciate the phone call that he gave you. Judge, I'm having trouble understanding something here. I mean, uh, uh, maybe I can't what, understand this well, what, What's going on right now? You can read that you, letter, but I can't on my direct testimony, Mr. and you Brandy, cut me short. Now you get to answer uh, the that questions. doesn't seem fair to me, Judge. Okay, you get to answer the questions presented to you. But but you're letting him read all this stuff. Mr. Brandy, hey, just try to read mine, and Mr. Brandy, I don't think I'm being treated equally. Come on, okay. Mr. I object to this. You, you object to what? The fact that you don't seem you don't to be following the judicial care. code and treating parties equally. Okay. All right. That's my perception. That's fine. You can have it. Mr. Dickerson, you can repeat your question. Thank you very much, Your Honor. You told uh, Mr. Federico, I do appreciate your phone call to me to at least reach out to settle matters. And I sincerely hope that we can settle things. Yes, that's true. That's the way I felt. I thought he was being sincere. So. That's consistent with what I have said all along. Then you write, please know that I'm doing this more for the people that follow me. Right? Yes. You wrote yes. that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you understand that? And then you write, I ex extended a good faith offer for something very serious. Is that right? Yes. And then you write, in fact, you can be criminally prosecuted for a misdemeanor violation of federal civil rights under 18 U.S.C. section 242 for your actions on April 25th, 2019. I believe that's true. You wrote that, right? Yeah, I believe that's true. I've seen it for prosecutions for something even less serious than that by judges. It's a violation of civil rights, criminal violation. The detective me testified that. Hey, there's no question pending, sir. Thank you very much. And then we get to the next page. I have told you that if we cannot settle this matter, I will file a complaint with the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline. Yes. You wrote that? Yes. You say, this must be done to protect other people in the future. Yes. Then you go on. If we cannot come to a settlement, I believe it would be proper to go to the FBI with a criminal complaint against you for stopping me from observing you on the bench on April 25th, 2019. You wrote that? Yes. Doesn't mean I said I was going to file one. I just said I believe it would be proper. Okay, please just, just answer yes. the question. Yes. Granted, this would only be a misdemeanor. However, it may help others that will come after me should you not agree to the apology and settlement. You wrote that? Yes. Since it is possible you could become a decent judge someday. You yes. wrote that? Yes. If we cannot come to a settlement, I believe it will be proper to go to the FBI to promote the claim against you for stopping me from observing you on the bench on April 25, 2019. So, if you could come to an agreement, then you wouldn't have believed that it would have been proper to the FBI. That sure is some awkward and not very precise language on my part. That's what you said, right? No, that's what I wrote, but I think that's... Uh, that's what you wrote? Okay. Yeah. So then that, we go on to the next one. That wasn't one. very well thought out. So, additionally, I have come to realize That since you work in a partnership titled Olson, Cannon, Gormley, and Gulo and Stavursky, which you abbreviated O C G A S A N S, right? Yes. 
that I should give some notice to these individuals of the matters involved prior to filing with the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline or the FBI. You wrote that? Yes. The calculus for this is simple. Putting myself in the place of any one of these partners and everything else being equal, I would want to know that a person who worked with the firm and had a prominent web page was not bringing any disrepute in any way to the firm or its name. You wrote that? Yes. Olson, Cannon, Gormley, and Gulo and Stabersky has been in existence since 1960. It would not be fair or Christian of me not to inform the firm of the issues at hand if we cannot resolve them. You wrote that? Yes. I have no idea what agreements there are between you and Olson, Cannon, Gormley, and Gulo, and Gulo and Stabersky. I therefore have uh, no idea if your agreements require you to disclose any of what we have discussed so far or not. Because the issues involved could affect how Olson, Cannon, Gormley, and Gula Stabersky might be perceived by the public, I believe I must give Olson, Cannon, Gormley, and Gula Stabersky a right to review prior to taking this matter forward. You wrote that? Yes. Uh, and you wrote that you recognize that it could bring disrepute, these things, if perceived that way by the public. Correct? I'm sorry, I lost it. Where did I say that? Or right, right there. Right here. So you acknowledge that um, all these things, the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline oh, went backwards, huh? and FBI complaints that you're talking about oh, okay. could bring disrepute. You wrote it right there, right? Okay. Is that a yes? Wait a minute, let me see. I'm you wrote that. Disrepute. Okay. Just trying to read the language here. Yeah. Okay. What, what, what it's showing there is, I don't know what you said just a minute ago if you transposed the words. Um, yeah, that's what you wrote though, right? Okay. What I'm reading right here is what I wrote. Okay. And uh, that you uh, recognize how these things could be perceived by the public, right? Yes. And then, so you say that... Um, to be fair and Christian, you need to notify his firm. Yes. Which I should have done earlier, and I, I, I stated that on my direct testimony. And then you go on, therefore, consistent with my beliefs, I will send a copy of all the relevant documents to Olson, Cannon, Cannon Gormley, and Gulo, and Stabersky. Right? You wrote that? Yes. Unless I hear from you by Monday, May 15, 2019. You wrote yes. that? Yes. Okay. And then you write, you go on, I can state with certainty that if I were any one of these partners and Federico did what was done on April 25th, 2019 to any human being, I would be very displeased with such action. Yes, I wrote that. I would want remedial action as soon as it was possible, and if it was possible. Right? Yes. I would not want anyone associated with a firm that had my good name on it, associated with a member of the bar that excluded a member of the public from an open courtroom, let alone an investigator and journalist from a public courtroom, because said person came to a private law office in a good faith attempt to settle differences and a complaint some days ago. Yes, and that's true. You that's wrote what that? I uh, that's what I believe. I believe that now. then, I believe that now. I just believe so, that's flat and just. Yeah, you believe that if you were a partner in that law firm, you wouldn't want Michael Federico associated with the firm if you knew what you knew, right? No, I wouldn't want a guy doing that to anybody. Yeah, and so... Under any circumstances. So you figured as soon as the partners found out, they were going to be pretty upset, right? No. Okay, Not so necessarily. Then you, so then you go on. I am sorry I have to cut this letter short. 
I have worked on this letter now over the course of two days. Okay. Yes. And then you sign it and date it. I have to get the wait. I have to get to the courthouse immediately. I think you're right there. Yeah, you got to get to the courthouse immediately. Right, you wrote that. Yeah, and then can I read that last line? Please excuse any and all spelling, grammar, and other errors. I virtually have no time but to sleep and do eat, sleep, and do legal work. Which eat, is true. Sleep and do legal work, right? Virtually no time but to do that. You're not a lawyer. No. You don't work for a law firm. No. But that's what you do. Eat, sleep, and do legal work? Yeah, I have my, my own cases going. Um, and, and I consider the Commission on Judicial Thing as legal work because they're part of the judiciary branch. Or the branch you of do judiciary. realize that you don't work for the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline, right? Not on an official capacity, but unofficially, yes. Okay. And they've asked me for investigative stuff in the past. You realize that you also do not unofficially work for them either? No, unofficially, yes, I do. No. I'd be better probably to say with them rather than for them. And I've used with uh, as well as for. And with is probably better because, like, he was working with the police. Okay, so I'll stop you right there. Charges. That's not responsive. Yeah. yeah. Now, you send that letter over. I emailed it, yes. And then and you wanted to bathroom break or something. Do you need a break? Uh, yeah, I've been drinking quite a bit of water. Goes in and goes out. How cold is that water? Do you need a, a new one? Oh, well, no, water's okay. I'm just okay. Can I have the attorney's cloak for a moment? Communicate with anyone, including your fellow jurors, in any way regarding the case or its merits, either by voice, phone, email, text, internet, or other means of communication or social media, or read, watch, or listen to any news or media okay. accounts, or commentary about the case, or do any research, such as consulting dictionaries, using the internet, or using reference materials, making the investigation, test the theory of the case, recreate any aspect of the case, or in any other way. Investigate or learn about the case on your own or former express any opinion regarding the case until it's finally submitted to you. And we'll be in recess until tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Thank you very much, and have a good night. Thank you all. Rise for next week, Jerry. Please, Jerry.